another great show brought to you by the Law of Attraction Radio Network. The Think, Believe, and Manifest Show with author, master trainer, and certified dream coach, Constance Arnold. Join us every week as we bring you life-changing information that will empower your life. And here's Constance. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And I am Constance Arnold, of course, your most gracious host. And today I am broadcasting live with just a little touch of southern flavor from beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. And, you know, I'm so excited that you joined me today because I know that the Spirit of God has attracted you here. So I want you to be in a spirit of expectancy because today, during this recording, you will be encouraged. You're going to be motivated and and inspired to execute the principles that you will hear today. Well, how are you doing? I pray that wherever you are or whatever time you're listening uh, to this podcast that you are doing well. You know that the best is yet to come in your life and that right now at this very moment there are unlimited possibilities and probabilities that exist and all you have to do is believe them and observe them, and those things will begin the process of manifestation in your life. Well, it is a sunny, beautiful day here in Atlanta, a slight wind, and it is simply spectacular. You know, so many people who have never been to Georgia say, Constance, I didn't know that you guys had so many trees and so many hills, and it is really beautiful. I just love living here, and especially this time of the year. Well, it is Memorial Day weekend here in the U.S., and for us, that means that this is a day or a time of celebration and remembering the men and women who have died or who are currently serving in the United States Armed Forces. So I know that I have a lot of military men and women who are listeners, and I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for serving. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for giving and really protecting the U.S. so that we can have the freedom that we currently do. So I just want to say thank you so much. Also, I love hearing from you. I love your emails. Uh, I personally read and respond to all of my emails. I know that uh, most people don't believe that until I respond back to them, but that is one thing that I really prayed about and I really want to be personal. Sometimes it takes me a while. Uh, Sometimes I'll just um, set aside a set time where I just spend a lot of the day responding to the emails that I receive from you. And I just want to share an excerpt from one of my emails from my listeners in the U, uh, from a listener in the UK. And you know, we have so many listeners on the Law of Attraction Radio Network who are from the UK, and we just love you. And what she shared basically was that she's been listening to my show for about two years. And she said that she made a decision that she was not only going to listen, but that she was going to study. So for her, that meant that she would listen, she would write down what she heard, she would really highlight the points that she felt really impacted her life and that she would uh, begin to execute those principles in her life. And her dream was she was already a musician, but she wanted a a recording contract. And, you know, God was the one who put that desire and that talent on the inside of her. But her belief was because there was a lack of money and her own belief systems around success, those two things really held her back or hindered her from really pursuing her dream. 
so she said she kept listening she kept observing her thinking her behavior and that she really just begun to change and what happened over time was her whole belief systems changed she spent four to five hours usually on most days really studying meditating and taking action and now guess what she has a recording contract isn't that amazing so I am so excited for her and I am excited for what can happen in your life and did you know that research states that we need to hear truth at least seven times before we actually retain it and so that's what I want you to do I want you to listen to podcasts that really uh, resonate with you or you feel drawn to them or it may be your favorite again and again and again. Take copious, note, copious notes and just begin to implement the principles that you've heard. So email me once again at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. Would love to hear from you. Well, guess who's back, Dr. Jeremy Lopez, and we're going to be talking about how to create your own reality. But before Dr. Lopez comes, I want to share just a little bit about my ebook, The Secrets of Success. You know, it's 25 years worth of my experiences in working with clients. Uh, clinically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. And some of the topics that I felt that the Spirit of God really uh, impressed on me to put in the book are how your childhood has shaped your belief, your ways of thinking and being, how to identify the inner issues with which impact your success. I, I have a saying that says, when you don't deal with your stuff, your stuff deals with you. Another area is confronting your now. How can you begin to identify the incompletes that are in your life right now that are hindering you? Identifying what is draining your life right now. How to learn from your doubts and fears. How to remove obstacles and or problems that are holding you back. How to set goals and how to begin to take small baby steps or if you wish quantum leaps of faith to make your dreams come true. How to develop strategies that begin moving you toward fulfilling your dreams, how to build a dream team, and I love this one, how to develop a dream sound bite, and this is just developing an audio commercial that talks about your dreams in the now, and you listen to that sound bite every day, and it impacts and changes your subconscious and how to create a vision board and many, many more. So go to, you need to get this book. As soon as you purchase it, it's actually a workbook. You're going to be doing a lot of writing, a lot of journaling. And as soon as you purchase it, you can download it and begin to create permanent change in your life when now you are worth the investment because remember if you want something different this year you have to do and be something different all right that is fulfillingyourpurpose.com okay we're going to go to these quick commercials and guess what i'm going to be right back with the one and only dr jeremy lopez <music> You're listening to Law of Attraction Radio Network, enhancing the well-being of millions of listeners worldwide. LOARadioNetwork.com is heard through 25 different Internet radio stations, as well as iTunes Radio, Stitcher.com, and our mobile apps. The Law of Attraction Radio Network, your trusted source of daily inspiration at LOARadioNetwork.com. Are you ready to create the life of your dreams? Imagine partnering with a coach that can help you manifest extraordinary success. Constance Arnold has been a licensed therapist and coach for over 25 years and has successfully worked with more than 10,000 clients. Constance will help you clarify your goals, eliminate self-defeating beliefs, and create strategic plans to manifest your dreams. Constance offers a variety of coaching packages, pay-as-you-go, 
half-yearly, and yearly coaching. Contact Constance today for guaranteed coaching that produces extraordinary and permanent results. For more information, go to fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Well, I am back and really excited about my uh, guest tonight. Uh, This is his second opportunity to be a guest on my show, and I have received uh, so many emails about how much you have really enjoyed Dr. Jeremy Lopez that I had to have him back again. And just a short introduction, the last time he was here, he was talking about living in the now, uh, how to create your day, and the law of attraction. And all I could say was, wow. And uh, Dr. Lopez is back. He is an international teacher, entrepreneur, author, and motivational speaker, and he's a life coach. He is the author of, of nationally published books and e-books. The Laws of Financial Progression, The Power of the Eternal Now, and his newest book, Releasing the Power of the Prophetic. He has a passion for teaching people how to release the mindsets that hold them back from achieving their fullest potential and really to help them to live their lives more purposefully. And in the last 10 years, he has grown four successful companies and written three great selling books. And I'm so blessed and so honored to have him back tonight. Dr. Jeremy Lopez, welcome back again to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. It is always a blessing to be able with all of you guys today. Well, good. Of course, you're calling from Birmingham, Alabama, and we have some exciting news that we're going to be sharing with uh, our listeners tonight uh, a little further on in the show. But I received so many emails, uh, uh, Dr. Lopez, about your uh, podcast, and people are like, who is this guy? He really helped me. So the last time uh, I was in a wild state of, uh, of, of mind, and I'm sure I will be again tonight. And I'm just going to let you get started with what you feel people are searching for and what do you feel people need. We, we've talked about the law of attraction and creating your day and a little bit about living in the now. What do you feel like a God has put on your heart to share tonight? Well, you know, Constance, first of all, it's definitely great to be with this wonderful, hungry listening audience. I think that's there's such a hunger today within humanity to be able to to know about the unknown. And I think we're moving into that hunger and desperation stage to to be able to dive into something that we've never heard before, something that no longer keeps us bound and keeps us sort of going in a cycle of a pattern, but breaking that cycle and pattern, moving outside of the box and discovering there's a wealth in the spirit realm that we need to get our hands on. And so I think people are finally moving past the known, because I think when you, uh, there's an old saying I tell people that, you know, if the known was powerful, you'd already be healed, you'd be whole, you'd never uh, worry about sickness, you would never have to worry about poverty. But to me, the wealth uh, or the power you need, it lies in the unknown. And that's the place that we're hungry for because the spirit world is such a a vast, uh, amazing, unlimited resource that we need. And so people are finally getting that faith and boldness to step out of the box of what we call religion and getting over into the unknown to, to find that their answer is not really out there, but it's inside of the unknown in them that they've never known before. I think when we begin to understand who we are and our identity and knowing how the vastness of us as spirits, then we begin to realize that everything, everything in life we've ever desired, hoped for, wished for, prayed for, whatever you, you know, you want to terminology it or call it, it's all inside of us. And I think that we've got such a wealth of treasure inside of us. And, you know, Constance, there's a scripture that says that um, there's a treasure that lies in these earthen vessels. And looking at that scripture has always brought me strength and power to know that there is such an in-depth, rich value and worth inside of me and you and all those that are listening. And so there's a treasure chest in us, and we're going to have to learn to ask and seek and knock and, and watch it begin to open up and discover the power that's always been in us. You know, everything in life we're ever trying to get our hands on, what if, and this is how I, I feel, what if everything out there was already in here, inside of us, 
And all we have to do is tap into that source, that strength of God in us to say, the whole time I've been searching outwardly, when the entire time it's always been inside of me. That DNA of God in the vast universe is deep inside of me. There's a, another scripture that I love that talks about, you know, that deep calleth unto deep. And yet when you look and analyze that, you realize there's a, a depth inside of Constance, that all of your life you'll, you'll, you'll take just trying to uh, search and just barely scratch the surface of how deep and how vast and how rich and how valuable you really are. And so life is an amazing journey that we take to find, no longer am I going to search out here, but I want to search, I want to seek inwardly now and discover this powerful DNA stream that lies inside of me, that God has impregnated me before the world ever was here. Before he ever thought about anything, I was there. And and now it's time for us to awaken to that Christ consciousness to begin to discover this wealth inside of us. So I believe people are finally hungry to say, you know, I'm hungry for something I've never known before. And you can't find it in the bookstore. You can't find it on CDs and tapes. And now sometimes those are great avenues to open you up. But most of the time, it's an awakening that just happens to to come to you when you're in in the power of just being and knowing that I'm alive, I'm real. And all of a sudden, something in you begins to say, that's right, acknowledge your true, authentic self. And it begins to come to life to you. And that's why I think today we're discovering really who we are in this vast universe. And so, Dr. J, how can people begin to access or tap into that wealth on the inside of them? Because most of us have been looking outside of ourselves and not really uh, acknowledging or even or we're not really awakened to what's on the inside of us. So what can people begin to do to access that wealth that's on the inside of us? Well, we have to start back to what I call the alpha state of being. You know, the alpha state of being is the beginning of us on planet Earth. And that is basically, you know, when we come to our mother's womb, we, we, have, we start developing patterns and structures. And, and we're so hungry as children because we're, we're wanting to be taught that we listen to good-hearted people but it's people who move in an unlimited or a limited realm themselves. And so all of our lives were always taught, if you need to be empowered, go to school. If you want uh, to make good money, go to college. And so we go through our lives in that type of pattern. And so we never stop. And, and the scripture says, um, be still and know that I am God. There's a power source when you are still, in the stillness of my life, and this is something that none of us ever truly encounter, because if I was to ask the listening audience today, how many of you have had an encounter with the God in you? How many have had an encounter of the real you, the person that you were born to be, even before time began? And so when we learn to be still... You know, I, I shared this with a woman in one of my life coaching sessions, and, and I shared with her, I said, do you ever find time to sit still? And she says, oh, I don't have time. Mm-hmm. And I said, that's the problem. I said, do you know that that's basically is handicapping you to everything else in your life, of all your problems, all your difficulties, of everything you cannot seem to find maybe victory in or, or get the answer for? I said, because as long as you don't know who you are, and as long as you don't know how to walk in that still moment and live and walk in an uh, awareness, awakening comes when you move in a still moment. And what I mean by move in a still moment is learning to be still and allow the power of being, allow the power of who you are, begin to wake up. And I said, when you're still, I said, then the movement of you beginning to awaken finally comes to the surface, and you begin to finally be introduced to, hello, my name is Jeremy Lopez, and I finally get to know the person that's been asleep for so long. I said, so So I told her, I said, your problem out there is will always be there as long as you don't know the person inside of you who is supposed to be directing the orchestra, uh, causing this out, outward experience of, of the atmosphere to move as a symphony, I said, because you're the controller of your life. You're the author, if you will. You're the one that begins to, to write upon the tablet out there, the atmosphere, and write what you desire, what you're looking for. 
And I said, but if you don't know you, then you don't know your passion, then you don't know your desire, and you don't know what the authentic, true self is looking for of your destiny in life. I said, if you don't know that, you'll always be out there feeling as if I'm never whole, I'm never complete. Uh, I, every, everything I touch, it doesn't turn out the way it should. I'm always in poverty. I can't seem to find joy because all of that external stuff, it can only be created and fashioned by the treasure within you. And if the treasure within you in the, in the moment of stillness has never been awakened, then all you're putting out there is fragmenta- fragmentation, fragmented pieces of your thoughts and fragmented pieces of you so nothing will ever get done in your life. Because if you're broken and if you don't know yourself as a whole person, everything you project will never be whole uh, because everything out there will be what you are. You know, that is just so powerful, uh, Dr. Lopez. And what would you say to people who possibly, you know, have been looking outside of themselves? Maybe they've been reading The Secret and, and, and you know, looking at DVDs and listening to CDs, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. So would meditation be a method of how they could uh, gain Absolutely. revelation on the inside of themselves? And what would that look like for them? Well, you know, I was sharing uh, actually in another life coaching session with a uh, a certain lady who who never had time to meditate, and she never had. To, and she said, "All I ever do is just pray, 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 pray." And I said, "But do you meditate?" Well, but that's prayer. I said, "No, it's not prayer." I said, "Prayer is a conversation that you're you're offering up to the universe. You're offering up to God. You're offering up to the source of life that you believe in." I said, "It's a it's a conversation. Meditation is where." You discipline yourself in the sense of getting in a quiet place, and you get to know you. And how that happens is by you not talking, you not demonstrating, you not activating, you're not doing anything. You're literally beginning to turn inwardly to look inside. And when you do, I said, you'll hear a still, small voice. You will hear something that says, you know, be still and know that I am God. In other words, you'll learn to be still and not even know the I am because one of God's names is I am, but you're also getting to know the I amness of yourself, of who I am. I said, so when I'm in meditation and I'm sitting in that quiet moment, I feel as if you can sense that awareness deep in you of an introduction of, hello, I'm here, talk to me. You know, I, I want to get, to, I want you to get to know the real you. And that's the place when you finally begin to have that peace that comes upon you like none other. One of, one of the Greek words for peace means nothing missing, nothing broken. Yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of us, move in our lives uh, broken, and we never know what it's like to really not have anything missing from our lives. But many of us need to realize that when you move in that tranquility, that peace through meditation, and you, and you learn to be still, in that moment is when that peace comes upon you that only God can bring, and you find yourself saying, there's nothing missing. So I don't have a bill that I owe. I don't have a, a need for a house or a car or this or that because there's nothing missing in me. And that's when you automatically realize if nothing is missing and nothing broken inside of me, then guess what will have to line up to it? This is the part that I love everything out there. Uh. Everything that is external of who I am must begin to hear the voice of peace that you have now become, begin to prophesy to the atmosphere to say, okay, you heard Jeremy, he's nothing missing, nothing broken. There's no lack in him. So guess what, guys? Guess what atmosphere? Guess what universe? Guess what feels? You've got to line up to that. You've got to line up to that, and that vibration, that frequency begins to put out there. All of a sudden, nothing missing, nothing broken. I don't owe debt. I'm not in. I'm not in crisis. I'm not depressed. And all of a sudden, everything begins to line up. To me, life is all about knowing you and knowing who you serve, and knowing that who you serve actually, or from God's point of view, is the one that has already completed the work in you, wow. and already have completed the wholeness of who you are. And that's why we live in a world where everything is external, because everything that I focus on externally, you know, that I think can can answer everything, uh, I'll keep that mentality all of my life, and I'll, I'll and I'll die fragmented, and I will die where where there's things missing. I never understood this, I never got that, and I never owned this, and I never had that, because that's how I feel inside. But when I know the wholeness of my identity, all of a sudden everything else 
in the universe just begins to say, you heard, the, you heard his voice, you heard the one in charge, Jeremy's in charge of his atmosphere. You know, we mentioned last time the word metron. It's a Greek word, and it means sphere of influence. And yet according to the Bible, which is so interesting and powerful for anyone and everyone out there, no matter who they are or what they believe, every person has a circle around them that's a sphere of influence, which means that is your, that's the place that you are to dominate in the sense of, okay, what is, what is it that you're trying to gather to yourself? What is it? How do you want your life to be? You're the master of this circle of the sphere of influence. What do you desire? And all the time, the atmosphere will speak to us and say, what do you want, Jeremy? Tell me what you need. Tell me what is it that we need to correct or fix. Or And all of a sudden, you begin to put yourself out there with the law of attraction to say, because I know who I am and my identity, and I know the, that I'm whole and I'm complete, and there's no lack in me, then that's what I want. And all of a sudden, everything begins to line up. Uh, so identity to me is the key to everything in life. Such and powerful that, truth. Uh. And Constance, I'm going to share this real quick, if you don't mind, while it's in my brain. The, the, the law of attraction, the problem with, with a lot of us that read the secret and the law of attraction that is so vitally powerful, and it, can, and it seems to be that universal law that is just waiting on you to acknowledge it, because it's going to flow, it's going to go, it's going to do its thing because it's a universal principle. But, it's, but also it wants you to orchestrate it in the sense of saying, what is it you want from me? What is it you're desiring? What is your thoughts telling me? And I can get on that same wavelength and frequency to bring you back what you need. The reason why many people, they bail out and say it doesn't work, doesn't work for me. Because the whole time I'm saying you can never project anything outwardly to the universe until you project inwardly to yourself. And when you deal with, with a whole man of who you are, and then all of a sudden the universe, I believe, begins to go to a higher frequency to say, that's what I need. I need somebody in control of their life that can share with me and tell me what it is you need. And so the law of attraction is going to be tough and difficult for those to really formulate and to work for someone who's living a negative uh, atmosphere or negative um, fragmentation of themselves because it's working for them. The problem is they say it doesn't work for me. Oh, but yet it is working for you because you're putting out the fact that you, in your, from your subconscious mind, I'm not complete, I'm not whole, I have need, I have need, I have need. And the universe says, that's right, that's what, she, that's what you're saying, you have need, you're, you're not whole. And so what do you think it's going to bring back to you? Things that are not going to, going to be broken promises, things that won't be whole, things that, that will never, a, a car that won't run. And so you're getting actually what you're thinking. And so that's why it said if you want it to, if you want it to work the, the, uh, the way you're desiring it to work, then you have to be a whole person, so complete, true. not lacking anything in peace. And, you know, you mentioned about we already have all things. And I know the Bible says that God yes. has already given us all things that pertain to life all and God, godliness. And I was just studying the other day that in consciousness we already have all things, but we just have to awaken yep. to it. So expound on that. What did you mean when you said that, that we already have all things? Uh, and how okay. can people begin to, from that place, begin to... Uh, move toward abundance and prosperity and living a purposeful life? Sure. Well, when I say that um, there's no need and no lack, that we already have all things, I believe consciously and, and, uh, and spiritually, I believe we have it. Excuse me, spiritually we have it, but consciously, because of our, of our upbringing, we're trained that we don't. Mm -hmm. And so there's always a conflict in you. There's always a conflict in me, always saying, but I do, I do have this. And yet my mind says, no, I don't, no, I don't, because many people are in get mode and not having mode. And there's a big difference. Uh, you know, there's a scripture that I love. And for those of you out there who are listening that, that, are, that are maybe uh, Christians or even Jews, you'll understand this concept because it's a, I think it's an Old Testament principle, but in Psalms 23 where he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I mean, think how powerful that one verse is alone because what, what, what he's saying, what the psalmist here is saying is the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, he's the one that's guiding everything, and I'm, I'm having to line my life up to what he wants and what he's desiring. But then he goes on to say, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In other words, there's never a place in Jeremy Lopez's life where ever I need or want anything. Now, granted the fact I can say, well, I'd love to have a new this or I'd love to have a new that, but I find myself training my mind to say, but in me there's no want. 
there, there's nothing that I really want because everything I have or everything I'm, I'm getting, I want to get my hands on, I have. Let me give it to you another way. Let's look at it from the standpoint of a fish in the ocean. I love this this example. A lot of us in, 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 in that are listening right now are like the fish in the ocean looking for the ocean because we've been taught the principle of the concept, get out there and get what you need. Get out there and get what you need. But a fish in the ocean looking for the ocean is sounds pretty silly because he is already in the ocean. And so that's the place we have to realize I'm already – I'm swallowed up in everything that I need, and everything that I need is swallowed up by me. Because since I'm whole and complete and I'm not lacking in anything, there's nothing that I want. There's nothing I desire. And so if it comes a place where I sense that I, I'm in need, let's say, of a car or I'm in need of a house or I'm in need of something, instead of me always projecting the idea of, oh, I wish I had a car, I sure wish I need, I, I need a car, what I'm doing is I'm speaking that death principle out of my mouth to basically say, I, I have want, I have, I have need, I'm lacking, I'm lacking, I'm not complete. And so what I do is I start visualizing from the law of attraction. I start visualizing from a, a God standpoint that, you know, the Bible says God calls those things that be not as though they were, because they already are, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you think about it. They already are. So to him, he's not calling something that doesn't exist. He's calling it because it already is, but to us, we can't see it, and we can't feel it, we can't touch it. But yet it's already here. It's already in me. And so when I have a need for something, I'm going to call it a need or a want for a moment. When I do, what I do is I instantly put myself in what I call the omega state of being. You know, alpha represents the, the, uh, the first stage or the genesis effect or the beginning stage of whatever it is you're at the beginning of in your life. And the omega state of being is the, the end of it, the end result, the happy ending, the you know, entertain the past mentality. And so we look at that and realize I have to already put my mind and my life at the omega state of being to say, hey, since I am whole and since I am complete, I already have this thing. I already have the car that I'm desiring. So now what I'm going to do is since I, since I have no need of a car because I already have it, I'm going to go and start visualizing that I'm driving it. I'm going to visualize what color. I'm going to, and that smell, everybody knows the smell of a new car is phenomenal. So, so I, I, I get my nose in, my, in order, my emotions in order. I get everything to feel, to sense, to smell, to touch, to taste, everything, exactly what I'm wanting by the natural you know, conscious, consciousness, if you will. But yet my spirit says, since you're already in it, go ahead and line everything up to that, to that place of the omega state of being that you already possess it. Wow. And so what I do is I don't say need or want. I just say, man, I'm so, I love this car. I'm absolutely loving this, this vehicle that I have. And I don't, and here's the, the thing. I tell people all the time, bypass your house. How am I going to get it? When am I going to get it? Where am I going to get it? What is it going to look like? Well, first of all, when you look at the when and the where's and the how, who cares? Because bottom line is God is going to use the universe, and God's going to make sure that you your need is supplied, and that thing that you don't have in the natural, that all you're doing is you're pulling out from the inner what needs to be on the outer. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm creating what I, what I quote-unquote need by the natural, and so before long, this is what's going to manifest to me, exactly the thing that I have already been thinking about because I'm already at the omega state of being. Uh -huh. I'm already there. So good. So you're living your life from that place. You're living your life from the end. Yes. Very Absolutely. powerful. You mentioned I Absolutely. am. A lot of people are talking about um, I am. Explain to our listeners uh, what, sure. what does that mean and how can they begin to implement that principle into their lives? Absolutely. Well, it's one of my favorite things to talk about because, you know, when you look, um, and once again, I know um, a lot of the listeners might not be familiar with the Bible, but in the Bible, in the Old Testament, you had a story of Moses, for example, and Moses went against the Egyptians to rescue, because uh, the Israelites, his people, were in bondage to the Egyptians, and so uh, when God sent Moses to Pharaoh and said, let my people go, one of the main things that he told him was Moses said, well, who do I tell God, okay, who do I tell Pharaoh that who sent me? I mean, what do I say to him? And he says, tell him that I am. Tell him I am that I am. And so Moses went before Pharaoh and said, uh, I am that I am. And what happens is it brings the alignment, because if you think about it, to, your, to the person listening and to the atmosphere, you don't go into this 
this fake religious mode that says, well, I'm a nobody, I'm nothing, because, hold on a minute, I am somebody, and I am, I am a, 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 someone who has power in me. So I'm not going to come from that standpoint of a false humility. I'm going to go from the standpoint of, of, of a truth that says, I am that I am, because, see, I'm already mingled with God. I'm, I'm, the Bible says we're bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, which means I'm one with God. God's one with me. In fact, if you want to get technical about it, for those who understand biblical principles, we'll find out that God won't even do anything on earth without using man first. Mm. And so because God, God sees us as, you're my image, you're my likeness, and so I'm, I'm a carrier of, of God, that where I walk, I am that I am. In other words, I've become one with him, so when I face a situation that looks unpleasant, what happens is I have to realize or manipulate the atmosphere to make it understand the concept that I am that I am just walked in the room. Well, what are you talking about? You are God. I am that I am. Mm -hmm. Because there's no separation. Jesus said something so powerful. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so what happens is knowing that I'm made in the image and likeness of God, when I'm here on planet Earth, I am that I am. I am, and check this out, in other words, I am everything that I've been trying to get my hands on, I am become that now. Mm -hmm. I am everything that I need, I have it. And so when you say I am, you come from a standpoint of I'm complete, I'm whole, and I am. I am what? You fill in the blank. What are you? I am whole, I am complete, uh, I lack in nothing, I am this, I am, I am love, I am grace, I am hope, I am merciful. And so when you begin to realize that you put yourself in that state of, of being, then you realize that, wow, it's not about a futuristic thing. You, I'm in the present. I am all of these things. Let me, I'll give you another example to sort of help out your listening audience. There's a, another scripture that talks about, it says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. What does that mean? It means that when I, in my natural state of being, sense that there is a lack of poverty, for example, and I sense that, okay, I'm, I, there's a lack of, 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 um, of prosperity, I should say, and so what I need to do is, according to Bible, it says, um, let the weak say, I am strong, let the poor say, I am rich. In other words, line yourself up in the I amness, not in the I used to or I'm going to have it. I'm going to have my prosperity one day. Once I get this job, Constance, I'm going to have it, or I used to have it, but now I don't. See, he's saying, line yourself up in the ever-present nowness to say, I am. So uh, when I'm weak, see, weakness comes from the standpoint of what has previously happened to me. In other words, what caused you to become weak? That's past. And weakness proceeds after the thing that caused you to become weak. And so what happens is I have to lie myself in the present moment to say, uh, let the week pass, now update themselves to say, I am strong. So when Constance asks, how am I, I begin to say, I am strong. My nowness brings, begins to prophesy to my atmosphere, prophesy to my body and everything that, 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 is, that is around me to say, I am strong. In other words, the voice of my com the commandment of my voice comes out to say, line up, I'm strong. I am rich, line up. I am whole, line up. And so what happens is I, I, I'm, I need my ears and my eyes, my natural uh, part of me to hear me decree and declare so my mind begins to wake up and say, hold on a minute, I am strong. No more past thoughts of how I became weak or poor or poverty-stricken. I am. And so you have to pull everything in you and everything in your atmosphere to line up to the present now reality. Because think about it. God it says his name is I am. That's a present moment. Mm -hmm. if, if you never hear where God says um, that when we pray, you know, we say, well, God used to be this or God will become this. God will never become anything, and God used to never be anything. He always has been. He always will be. He is I am. He's a present God. And so we have to line ourselves up to that nowness and that present tense of who he is for me to where when I feel as if I'm going through a situation, I begin to speak it out and say, I am. And, and then God says what? Fill in the blank, son. Fill in the blank, daughter. What is it? What is it you are? I am strong. I am whole. 
Does that make sense to you? Oh, that's so powerful. It's so interesting because, <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm just listening in awe of you. I don't know what to say really uh, when I'm <laughs> when I'm interviewing you. It's so interesting. I received so many emails, and some of my listeners says, Constance. We never heard you that quiet before. <laughs> you know, I said because I'm intensely oh, I listening. And you know, uh, uh, just share briefly with our listeners. You 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 alluded to prophesying or declaring or decreeing. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the whole I amness. So, what would that look like for sure. them? What do you mean by well, that? Well, basically, okay. Basically, one of the scriptures uh, in the Bible says to decree a thing, and it shall be established. And you might say established in what? Established in whatever you need it to be established in. So in other words, the power of life and death is inside of my tongue. And basically what's inside of my mouth is going to begin to, to come forth from what is truly inside of you. You know, whatever you, whatever you have buried deep inside of your heart, it's what's ever going to come out of you. That is what it, the universe is going to give full attention to to say, your wish is my command, if you want to call it that. You know, because you're pulling from a heart thing. You're pulling from a heart string in your, in your spirit to say, this is a, what I truly know for me to be real, to be honest, to be pure. It is, it is ingrained in me. It is what I know I, I, that I believe. And that, and when you come from a strength like that inside of your heart, and then all of a sudden your mouth will begin to proclaim that. And, and what happens is when you say that, when I say prophesy, for example, uh, and I say, you know, prophesy from the I am standpoint of view, I'm saying what is truly in, ingrained inside of you will automatically come out of your mouth. And when it comes out, everything around you begins to line up to what you just said because it didn't come from a wishful thinking mentality or or maybe some sudden thought that passed by your brain because that has a lower frequency and it still holds a little power, but what holds the greatest power is when it comes from the in-depth of you that you have you have put it inside of your spirit to be lodged in there to say, this is my belief system. And when that comes out, you're talking about back away, watch out people, because that's going to begin to decree something from your mouth, and it's going to be established in whatever arena you sent that word to do. One thing I love, um, uh, and of course I know I'm giving a lot of scripture today for people, but one of the scriptures in Isaiah says that God's word will not return back to him void, but it will go and accomplish everything that God is sending out to do, which means when God says something, guess what, universe, you have to line up to that, and so everything in my life has to line up to that, and so when God says something, that means that word, let's say, for example, if God uh, is telling Constance, you know, you're going to have a television show, you're going to do this, or you're going to do that, or you're going to have a child, a grandchild, whatever, whatever the aspect is, whatever he speaks to you. So when he speaks that to you, that word will literally linger around in you and begin to sort of turn and churn and stir in you until you acknowledge it, grab a hold of that, tr- that truth for you, and you begin to make it your reality. And you begin to ponder on it and think about it, and it become it comes to you as a seed form. Everything in the universe comes in a seed form. Your thoughts are seed form. Everything's a seed form, and it waits on your reply because we are so powerful. Uh, let me, uh, and I'm not going to get off my, my subject, but give you an idea. The word human, it means, hue hu comes from the word divine. It comes from that spectrum of energy or vibration. So literally, you are divine man. There's a part of us who has the DNA of God in us, and so we are divine. So we have to be careful what we think, what we speak, uh, our, how, we, how we act, because everything in the universe waits on that. It waits on your response. It waits on your thoughts. It waits on what you say. And so when we begin to look at that, we begin to, to, to find out that if that's the case, then when I speak something out of my mouth and in a seat form, then it begins to produce for me. So when God speaks to Constance and says something, what happens is it comes to you in a seat form. And God says, look, my word, what I told you, it can't return back to me void. It has to accomplish and, and finish everything that I put out to do in the universe to you. And so now, guess what? God no longer has that word. Constance does. Mm -hmm. So my question to each one of us is this. Would God control that word, or would Constance control that word? Because it came came out of the mouth or the hand of God down to Constance, and now he he says, now I've given you. I've given it to you. I've given you that seed of destiny. I've given you a seed of futuristic possibility.
abilities and great adventures and prosperity and wealth and abundance. So here's the seed. I, I, I give it to you now. So what your job is to do is to be able to create it. Take your paintbrush with your words and create it. I and say things to the nature of, you know what, that seed in me is growing, and I can see where I'm going to use that prosperity. I can see what I'm going to do with this abundance of this or that, whatever that seed is that you sense God has put in you. And so guess who becomes the artist of that seed and the water of that seed? You do. Not God, because he gave it to you. He gives it to us as co-creators to say, let me see with what, what you're going to do with what I've given you. And, and then, then, when it, then when it's done and it's complete and it's manifested and it becomes your reality, guess what? Then it's going to come back unto me, and I'm going to say, well done, Constance. You did a good job creating what I gave you. Well done. God waits on us to create whatever it is we need to create for an abundance of life for us, our family, our children, and our atmosphere. It's not up to God. He's given it to us to say, let me see how you can produce it. God loves it. This is what I love about this. God loves when we create. He loves when we take a piece of the puzzle to say, I don't really know what this is or what it means, but I know I'm going to feed it with my thoughts, feed it with my love, Feed it with passion, desire. In fact, let me begin to open up that piece. Let, let's, let's create it. Let's begin to think about it more. And all of a sudden, guess what? You water it, it begins to grow. And that piece of the puzzle before long becomes a beautiful puzzle. And then finally you see the masterpiece of what it's supposed to be. And so faith is a big play. It plays a big role in our lives. And that's where I look in my life and say, you know what, God, you're, you're, a, you're a good, amazing, loving God, and you've given the universe who has a conscious mind that I can work with to develop, to create, and to bring forth anything and everything that you want me to create. And, and the neatest thing about this in life is anything and everything that I want to create, God wills it if it's good, if it's great, if it's awesome, if it brings a good report back to the universe and those around me to uplift and encourage them even higher and greater. Imagine the frequency and vibration that would arise the more that we begin to bring forth good reports and, and think about things that are uh, amazing and, 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 and uh, life-producing for us and for those around us. And then all of a sudden, bam, it begins higher and higher. Imagine if every person in, in creation on the earth was beginning to, to vibrate that type of level to say, I want to vibrate something that produces for everyone around me to go higher. Imagine what the earth would be like and look like after that. Amazing. <laughs> How many of you <laughs> would love to hear more of this from this powerful man. Well, uh, we're going to switch gears here just a little <laughs> bit because we have some exciting news. Uh, Dr. J, uh, I'm going to start calling him that now, Dr. J will be a new host on the Law of Attraction Radio Network, I think, beginning June mm -hmm. 1st. And I want you to share with our listeners about your new show and uh, some of the things that you probably will be covering. And I am so mm -hmm. excited about this. I'm going to listen to you every <laughs> week, I'm telling you right now. So share with our listeners, Sounds Dr. Good. J, the name of your show and the format and you may still be thinking about that and some of the things you're going to be talking about. Sounds great, Constance. Well, the name of the show is Create Your, Re Create Your Reality, and uh, the website actually is up and running. It's createyourrealityradionetwork.com. So it's createyourrealityradionetwork.com. And, and that will lead you to my website that has all of my products and stuff on there. But the show is going to be Create Your Reality with Dr. J. And we're going to tap into, in fact, I've already got a lot of different speakers lined up that you guys, your listening audience, would love. And I'm going to tackle some controversial things because I believe that our mind and our consciousness has to expand. You know, and I'll, I'll say this real quick. Everything in creation God created has to move in movement to, to grow and to expand like the universe. So your mind is always going to begin to, to expand. And so you need to keep on listening to, you know, constant, to Jules, to some of these other, one, other ones, as well as myself, that challenge your consciousness to begin to be in movement and growth. And so we're going to tackle a lot of, of uh, mindsets. Uh, within the show, I'm going to have a lot of guest speakers on the show. And Constance, one thing I will tell you for your listening audience as well, 
is I move in prophecy. I think many of you might have heard what we call spiritual readings or, you know, hey, read my mail, you know, but prophecy is basically me hearing from God. I have that, uh, that gift that God has given me and graced me with to be able to hear things. I mean, I've helped people from, um, with the FBI, from police, uh, help find missing children. Uh, Destiny's Child's a good friend of mine. I talk to Michelle Williams a lot. We deal with producers, the Kardashians. I deal with so many people that say, tell me what God is telling you about my life. And so I'm going to tackle a lot of that on the broadcast as well, and I'm going to be able to what I call prophesy on the airwaves to be able to uh, give some some prophecies, some readings, whatever you want to call them from God, to be able to get the listening audience to say, "Oh my goodness, that's 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 for me." He just called up my name, and it's fun. It's it, it's it's fun. It's exciting. And so we're going to tackle a lot of great things on the on the broadcast. Are you excited? Uh, is this a dream of um, yours, yeah. or? <laughs> You know, I'm very excited. I really am. I've been on. I've been doing radio. In fact, I've hosted shows for years and been on so many interviews mm-hmm. and television, radio, and internet for so many years. And uh, and you know, with talking about the law of attraction, this is something that I knew had already existed. I just didn't know how it's going to look. And so, this is a great example for the listening audience. When you when you get your desire and your heart's passion to say, I don't care how it will look. I don't even care what it's going to sound like in the sense of what the name of the title is going to be. I just know it's real. I know it's there, and so I begin to track that to myself. And all of a sudden, guess what? This begins to come, and God used you as an open door to help introduce, you know, this great um, principle and this great reality that is about to, to be in my life. And so, and so food for thought, people, attract, attract what you want, because I'm living proof that Constance is too, it comes in your life. It's so interesting, because really, uh, I was moved by the Spirit, as I said in, in my first interview with you, because of what was going on with my sister before she made her transition about how I could mm-hmm. more effectively, you know, live a powerful day in spite of the current circumstances, and I googled, and because of what you have been believing and vibrating and, and mm-hmm. already have it, uh, I felt led to listen to you and then to contact you, and that's just a great example of what you shared today. And so you're going to be on June the 1st. How exciting. So all of you will have an opportunity, and I don't even have to encourage you to listen to him because <laughs> once you've heard him uh, on my show, you, you know that this man just uh, emanates a wisdom, revelation, insight. You know, he just has... Uh, a great techniques and and uh, revelation about how to change your mind and we're so excited, Doctor J, about your new show. Oh, I said, well, I'm excited too, and I'll tell you, we're all going higher, are we not? We we're are. going to move in such a consciousness is going to totally rock our lives. <laughs> so I'm excited to see what's gonna what's gonna become of that which already is. So true. So we're closing. Do you have in summary anything you would just like to leave with our listening audience tonight, Dr. J? Well, Constance, I do want to share one thing if okay. I could with some people, and that is this. I Today I was um, spending time, of course, doing what I needed to do, and all of a sudden in my spirit I knew something popped up in my spirit, and that was this. There's three people that I feel very, very strongly in my spirit that need to have, and, and we haven't talked about this, so I want everyone to know Constance and I have not discussed this whatsoever. Mm-hmm. This popped in my spirit earlier. But there's three people that desperately need life coaching from Constance. Mm-hmm. I felt so strong in my spirit. There's a breakthrough. And, and Constance, I felt very strong that, that it was line upon line, precept on precept, which means that there's things in step uh, patterns and forms that you're going to begin to take a couple of the listeners, basically just break their, their old patterns and structures, and I saw them be set free in liberation. Just I saw such a spiritual liberation come upon some people. So I just want to leave to encourage people. This is a mighty, mighty woman that's got some great revelation. And I'll tell you, if you need to be spiritually set free in this area, you need to definitely go with with her and get some life coaching because I heard some great things from you. And just, I tell you, I'm I'm excited with with what's happening in your life, Constance. So definitely listen to the audience. Support this woman. She's worth it. She's valuable. And she's, well, she's worth it. Well, you know, you and I have not talked. <laughs> and it's so no. interesting because the one word that God gave me this morning was breakthrough. 
that he mm-hmm. wanted me to help people to break through, to have a big breakthrough in their lives. And it's yeah. so powerful, you know, that you would share that. And so for everyone who's listening, I mean, if if he spoke that and you felt that that resonated with you, and I know so many of you have said, well, you know, Constance, I've been thinking about it. Well, it's time to stop thinking and to do it. And <laughs> do uh, it. <laughs> uh, now is the time. So you can email me at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. So grateful to you, Dr. J, so excited about your new show. Well, once again, this is Constance Erler with the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show saying to you, I love you, God loves you, and guess what? The best is yet to come. Thanks for joining us today on Think, Believe, and Manifest. We'll be back next week with another great show. For more information, go to fulfillingyourpurpose.com.